I think the challenge for a lot of urban planners in Cincinnati is to get outside of the mindset of it's Cincinnati, so nothing can really happen or, or you know, we can't progress. And um, you know, development to me is all about progression. So I would love to see the area continuously progress. And what UC has done in the past 10 years, um, it only makes sense that Burnett Woods, the largest park in this area, uh, gets that attention. I think it'd be a really cool thing to actually make Burnett Woods something attractive to everyone, especially because it's so close to campus. I would love to have a cool park where I could go to and study and hang out with my friends without being scared of anything happening. Just having a getaway, you know, from campus and studying in the library and everything. So I think it'd definitely be worth it if it actually, you know, got out of paper and happened. Burnett Woods itself is a park, but it's also in, in, in urban forest and it's been preserved and it is a preserved forest for the community. In terms of development, I don't think too much development needs to happen in Burnett Woods to make it a more successful public park. I think it just needs to be redesigned to have certain spaces that will attract more people. A real weakness is it just doesn't look that appealing right now. A lot of stuff is, you know, run down and it really needs to be built back up. I see a lot of potential in that park. I mean, it's so close to the university. A lot of students would use it if, if you renovated it like a Washington Park or something like that, how they're bringing OTR back, if you can bring Burnett Woods back. I do live around campus, and I wish I could use the park as much as I could, but actually only been there several times, and it's a bit of pity for having such a big campus right next to it and not a lot of people using it. We feel like Burnett Woods currently has a bit of, um, kind of lives up to its unsafe vibe that it gets around campus. And we feel like there's a lot of improvement that needs to be made um, in order for people to use it as a connector between Ludlow and campus. And as a result, I think it definitely has a lot of room for improvement. And it has a lot of potential for development as well. I do believe that it is important to have um, areas of green space in the city that are relatively untouched. You know, these are preserves. So I, I did feel like it, it was an opportunity to maintain something in its, even though what we see is not natural state um, in this part of the country, it was something that is closest to the natural state among the many parks that we have. What I love about studio teaching, which may or may not be appreciated by students and clients and stakeholders and everybody, is that it's sort of improvisational. You know, we don't know exactly how we're going to do it. We have an idea, you know, we have a template. We've used that template before many times. It does change. You know, we know it's going to change every semester, even our standard template, because it'll be a different problem. Um, but we don't know exactly what's going to happen. Each professor contributes to what his or her students need to have specifically. The different disciplines look at things different ways. So you tend to find that engineering students tend to get down into the weeds. They look at the minutia. They, they are looking at how a road gets laid out or you know how the building goes onto the site. Whereas the planning students and the DAP students tend to look at things from the much higher 100,000 foot view and the difference between that is that the DAP students frequently don't see some of the specifics that are going to trip them up. So they're looking at this 100,000 foot view and they don't see that there's little things down there that are going to create a problem. The engineering students on the other hand sometimes get so far into the specifics that they sort of, you know, to be cliche, kind of miss the forest for the trees. They're looking at so many details that sometimes they kind of lose track of what the larger purpose of everything is. So having the two groups work together really works well because the planning students get the engineering students to look at the big picture and the engineering students get the planning students to look at the small picture. This class kind of reflects the shift that's happening in the industry right now. So in the industry there's so many new technologies and 
um, complexities in infrastructure and in construction, that uh, the industry is becoming more integrated. There's no longer, you know, the architect, the head of the project, and other people working under him to create a vision. Now it's a team of different disciplines working to solve a problem or develop a vision. And I think that this studio reflects that shift in the industry. We chose to work in the Niehoff studio uh, so that we could collaborate with the engineers and so that we would have a project that is rooted in reality. Uh, the students were asked to design a restaurant for Burnett Woods that the park board had identified as uh, an appropriate development opposite Good Samaritan Hospital. This studio is significantly different in the sense that instead of just working with fellow planners and possibly some community groups, we're actually working with a different discipline, which makes it a little bit difficult because we've always operated the same way of where we developed a plan, but now we're actually working with the science and the math of our plans and the true functionality of our plans. So we find out at the end if it's actually going to be done or not. It feels much more like a real um, experience like that you would get in a co-op where you would work with different disciplines like engineers um, to achieve a goal of a project rather than just a singular planner working on it, which I think is really helpful in understanding what real world planning is like. It's a really eye-opening experience to work with people from different majors because I personally work with one other planner and one other engineer, so when we come across a problem working on within our project, you can tell that the planners and the engineers come up with a solution that's completely different and how we think about things completely different. And I think it's great that we're doing it so that when we go to reality and we have to work with all those people in real life, then we'll know better how to deal with it. The way that we approach problems is actually fairly similar, but the different skills that we bring are a lot different. And so uh, it isn't as much of a clash of personalities as I was kind of expecting, but it is uh, very useful that the urban planners we're working with know how to do things that we do not. So I've, I've really enjoyed it. I know for civil engineering, this is the only studio experience that any of us have ever had. So this class is completely different from anything we've taken before. You know, we used to just do lots of calculations and, you know, the boring engineering stuff. But uh, this has been a total breath of fresh air where we're able to work with our classmates to make something really productive that hopefully will turn into something real and tangible out there in Burnett Woods. It really, you know, it gives you a different view of how things go. When you get in the real world, you're not going to be working with engineering students who been in the same class as you and understand everything that you're going to understand. Getting the students to work together um, is a bit of a challenge. Um, anytime you're working with a group of people, some people hit it off, some people don't. One of the differences you have is in a work environment, you've always got the point of, well, either you get along or you're not going to work for this company anymore. You can't really do that in a studio. You've got to find ways to help the students get along. And in fact, that's actually part of what the studio is supposed to do because part of the requirements we have to hit for things like accreditation and, and other such things is students have to learn how to work together even though they're not from the same discipline or even within the same discipline even if they're not of the same personality. So it's a lot about the students learning to work together uh, and in fact actually we tell them up front that two things will hurt your grade. One is not contributing at all but the other is contributing everything, refusing to let other people do things and kind of taking over. You've got to learn how to work with others, be respectful of their ideas, and merge things together because at the end that's what's going to give you the strongest product. This is really different because we get here and Anton tells us, you know, you're designing a restaurant, you get to design however you want, but you have to follow certain rules, mechanical rules and design rules. And mostly he gives us instructions that we get to work on our own designs and he'll tell us, I think this is strong, I think this is bad. So pretty much we get to design our own restaurants according to what we think would look good for the park. It's a pretty open-ended design pr process uh, that Frank has given us. He gives us some guidelines and he, push us, he pushes us to kind of different and new levels of thinking than we've done before in the past in studios. 
um, which allows us to kind of take it in our own direction uh, and gives us a lot more creativity, I believe. A lot of courses in the engineering college are very A to B. Uh, I mean, they give you a formula, you use the formula, you get an answer. In the studio, you have to take a lot of different aspects into consideration. There's more variables. There's the, the people variable. There's all the nature variable. You know, I mean, I've never had to use a design program and model something before. I've always really just put it in to the structural analysis and ran it. Uh, we spent a few days visiting the project site, maybe a half hour, hour each time. We're basically designing the bridge, structurally making models of the bridge, and designing a uh, patio area. We are going to work on how to make Clifton Avenue a much more balanced street in terms of transportation, make it a much more multimodal uh, way of, 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 uh, of transport. But at the same time, Clifton needs to relate well to the park. Uh, my group has spent a lot of time visiting the site. Um, we've done several visits going and scoping out elevations and doing soil studies and um, doing topographical studies of the area. Uh, my personal role in the project is to oversee the general site planning and the placement of the pathways and the general design of the plaza that's part of our scope of our project. Along with a team of a couple other civil engineers as well as an urban planner and some architectural engineers, we are concentrating on looking at the idea of implementing a restaurant within Burnett Woods. We are all working on different restaurant designs for either the north, central, or south side of the site, which is by Clifton Avenue in front of Goodson Hospital. And I am personally trying to do something with a theme of urban farming and you know, fresh food to the table and just work with that concept of kind of like a bar in a farm setting restaurant. My personal role in the project area along Bishop Street is creating a new residential uh, co-housing apartment and townhouse uh, area and also a new public plaza to the northern side of Bishop Street. I think improvements can be made inside the park, um, even as extensive as a restaurant and some additional parking. Uh, it, it's always a question of design, you know, how it is laid out to be compatible with the topography, with the existing trees, the views, and other natural features. Um, I think it can accommodate some improvements of that scale um, and many other smaller improvements. Um, amphitheater, improved walkways, absolutely. Um, and I think working with green infrastructure, it can absolutely be uh, best practice for managing stormwater. Absolutely. So I think that, that, that we can maintain areas of preserve, natural preserve, in this block of the park and make improvements. But um, I think the, the biggest impact is going to be what can happen around the edges of the park. Because of its proximity to campus uh, and being right across the street, it is a resource that I think is underutilized by the colleges on campus and by the students. And I think if there were more, uh, more development and more, um, more planning over there, uh, that students would take much more advantage of it because it is a beautiful park. Um, and to have that resource right adjacent to campus is pretty unusual. Uh, so I think the students were actually excited about that. Many of them, believe it or not, had not even been in Burnett Woods before this project started. So walking over there and showing the site and saying this is where your restaurant is going to be gave them an appreciation for the site and uh, the beauty of it and actually many of them say they now return there for lunch and, and breaks and just a quiet walk. So I think if the park actually was to be developed, I think it would get a lot more activity um, and you'd see more students over there. So I think the students' appreciation for that has uh, elevated considerably you know, since the beginning of the project. So. I initially saw Burnett Woods as a place where it could be transformed into like the High Line, kind of a, a fantasy garden um, oasis. But the more we got into the project, the more I realized what a gem it is to have here in the heart of Cincinnati, kind of this untouched land that um, could be appreciated as is with just a few infrastructure changes, which I think were 
um, focused on in the studio? Well, you know, Burnett Woods is, is one of those really wonderful assets that we have here in the city. Uh, the question is, development simply for the sake of development is never smart. However, if there are things we can do to Burnett Woods that may make it uh, more usable for the people of the neighborhood, uh, that may make it more attractive, uh, then those are the kind of things you want to do. Because certainly you don't want to have a wonderful thing like Burnett Woods and have people maybe not utilize it to its fullest capacity. Yeah, I certainly think it could be the next up and coming park in Cincinnati. Right now there's been a lot of talk of Washington Park from what we've seen in the past with all the development that 3CDC's done around it and in the park too. And I think this could be the next big park in Cincinnati for the uptown area. If we can really extend the public knowledge and provide some real entertainment there, uh, just to supplement what's already going on there, then Burnett Woods could be a huge attraction for the University of Cincinnati and the entire city itself. I think, especially like with what we're working on, that it can be a very valuable asset to the Metropolitan Sewer District. And I think the, just like even looking at some of the quantities that Burnett can remove compared to like other implementations, it's, it's significant. And so I think Burnett could be a very valuable asset, even specifically with the stormwater management side. I think there's definitely potential for Burnett Woods and it's just gonna take a little time and planning and negotiating and I think it's in a great location, so it'll be used by a lot of people.